This is one of those cars that kind of got lost in the process because when Terry came on board, we ran Banjo Matthews' cars out of Arden, North Carolina, and all the chassis came from there. This particular car has a Hutcherson Pagan front clip on it, so it's been changed somewhere down the line. But we weren't smart enough back in that era to save the cars. We literally, when we had to refurbish the cars as far as body change or something, we'd simply sell the cars off and build new cars. So I'm sure whoever bought this particular car here, they changed the front clip on it. But from the firewall back, it was basically constructed at Junior Johnson's. We did all the interior work, the paint work, the body work. You know, it's like Junior used to tell us, if you want to make a lot of money, learn how to race cheap. So we learned how to do it all in-house, and we built everything on the race cars ourselves. Definitely looking at the car, you know, I think it's the, they're one of the Speedway cars. And the beauty of this car right here is the things on this car is really in that era is correct. You know, like me and Tim was looking at, you know, the oil coolers, the radiators, and everything's correct on the car. I mean, down to the seat, you know, so it's, um, it's a neat car, beautiful car. In a, you can kind of tell what they call like the back glass is what they call the aero coupe. So it's like, you know, uh, it's a wonderful car. But anyway, we was talking about this two friends of ours right here. They signed this car, so that's pretty cool. So. And, and, and Beamer and I, we were just talking. Wayne Dalton, he passed away back in, uh, I guess, 1999, yeah. 2000. And David Little, he still works at Penske Racing today. But you can tell, I told Beamer earlier, I said, it must have been close to quitting time because, you know, the only thing I see that they're missing right here, we used to have these brackets that hold the tailpipes up, but you had to have a strap running across here to hold in case the strap broke over there. Yeah. It must have been close to quitting time because they forgot to put them on there. But as far as the suspension itself, it, it's perfect. These guys have, they found them a gem in the rough right here because yeah. looking at the outside of the car, you think, well, there's a lot of history. But when you come underneath the car and start looking around, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we see on the car looking up in here at the roll cage design a lot of triangulation with the roll cage and stuff that Chevrolet developed with the triangulation. What they were trying to do is make the car stiffer to where you could understand the deflection, meaning the movement of the suspension and stuff. This is a very, very neat car on top as well as underneath. And it's, uh, it's something you could take home and, and literally put in your living room if you wanted to. It's a nice car. I guarantee you go around a racetrack too. The, the problem you run into is we didn't we didn't keep records back then. We never numbered cars because one you didn't have that many cars. You okay? Well, you, you didn't say well let's take chassis number four. You say okay well, let's take the car we ran at Darlington. Well everybody knew which one it was because you only had three or four cars. They're Junior Johnson's cars I can tell because they, they got his fingerprints all over them. Just the way he did things and the way he made us do things. We should have done a better job when there's only like eight or ten of us working and we just trying to race, that's the last thing you worried about was keeping up with numbers.